P-Town Weekend Review. Yeah! This week's Piper ride was out the moon on New Year's Eve. Temps today were finally below freezing, so we headed out to hit the frozen trails. Started off going right up Nature's Way 1. Speaking out. New Year's Eve at the moon. Nice condition down here. Most of the mud's frozen. Leaves are keeping it tacked together. Nice. Headed towards ledge view now. So next up was ledge view, followed by eight, then to edge of the ledge, and then down to the lake. Leaving the lake, we're gonna head up ET, then uh, Screamer, skip the dark, so it'll probably be muddy. And then make our way back up to the old nature center on Big Blue Dare Silver Fox. And probably back to the car. 
Should be about six miles by then. Lake's frozen. Come on, Pooch. Just starting up. It's gonna work out nice. We're gonna be getting out of here soon, finishing off the five tree. And then out through Dorney to the parking lot. This will be just in time before we get wet. After the car. Rain's just starting. We're finishing at a perfect time. Get back to the house, clean up. Happy New Year, events. Happy New Year, everyone. Succeeded. Pooped out the pooch. So Happy New Year, everybody. Just leaving Moon Lake on New Year's Eve with Piper in the back seat. Got a good recovery ride out here after. Dan Doan's epic mix multi-surface madness ride yesterday. So spun out the legs out at the moon. Good riding conditions are good out here. Looking forward to reviewing the year via the review. Uh, closing out the year here. So I asked some people to send what their thoughts were on the year as far as their own personal hardest rides they had, best memories of a ride they had, uh, biggest accomplishment they had this year maybe, anything relating to riding that happened throughout the year. Uh, so heading back to the house now, we're having a little New Year's Eve soiree. So hopefully get some live interviews from people as well. So you'll be seeing some of those shortly. Happy New Year everyone. As stated, back at the cave, uh, we rounded up everybody and took interview questions, reviewing their thoughts of the year on various topics. Um, start out this year with the idea of this review, doing an episode every week, and uh, honestly I never ever thought that I would have made it and done it the entire year, keeping to that goal. Um, but here we are, and we did it up to episode 51. Uh, been very neat very fun lots of work um, but definitely enjoyed throughout the year going back uh, especially in the summer watching episodes from the winter when it was snowing and then now when it's snowing watching episodes from the summer back when it was green and warm uh, but just neat to keep track and uh, go back through and, and see what we did throughout the year uh, kind of a reminder of how good we have it but here we are going down to the cave to see some of the first questions asked. Let's yeah. get this party started! <laughs> <laughs> so the first question asked was... What was your biggest or longest ride? So here's the answers from those. Biggest rides. P-Town Roubaix. P-Town Roubaix back in April. That might have been... How long of a ride was Longest that? mileage. 70, 70... I did the bonus part. Yeah, a little over 70, 7,000 plus feet of climbing. Longest in Massachusetts. The biggest ride was a uh, prisoner loop with you and Liam. Biggest ride? Yeah. I think Strava said my biggest ride was that gravel ride we did like a Thursday night or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, like 37, 36, the, uh, 37 miles. Yeah, that was a good one. 
Yeah. Or even a reservoir dog, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mean mood. Biggest uh -oh. Kim's looking to crash and fall asleep. No, I'm just trying to stand up so I don't. Where was that from? Don't remember. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable. Leaving from East Lake and out and out and around. So I only did one big ride this year, and it was only 30 miles. It was not a good year for big riding. What was the 30 was, mile ride? It was the ride from our house in G Town up the DNL rail bed, <laughs> around <laughs> to Mountaintop to do all the snappers and stuff, and back down. In what the was rain. It? In the rain. Oh, Cold course. rain. So I have to say the best rides have been any ride I've had with this group because I'm new to the area and these are all my friends that I now have. Um, and they've gotten me into all kinds of crazy stuff, such as <laughs> take a rap, take a bow. <laughs> uh, trip to Massachusetts, uh, but that was 300 miles from here all the way up to Kingston, New York first, and then from Kingston, New York to Massachusetts the second day. Pizza ride, oh, yeah. where we actually got dumped on with rain, actually right after Boone said something. Oh. Or let's see, the ride with Megan and Kyle from the lake, out to Moon Lake, all around, lake lake. And Sweet Valley and stuff like that. That was a good ride. Um, biggest ride, like mileage wise, was the Dogfish Head ride. I think that was 78 miles. That was my farthest ride up to that point. And that was a flat ride. And we were just pedaling for four plus hours. And the, the recent Dan Doan Winter Adventure that we just did, mixed surface ride, was 87. That was my longest ride ever. It was attempted to be a 107, but we ran into all kind of navigational issues and darkness and cold and, and a lot of things. But it's definitely an ambitious ride, especially for the end of the year, for late December. Uh, right. Any of my Naka Mixon rides? Naka Mixon. I think I went down there like four or five times. I think my longest ride was only 32 miles. That's nothing That's to a shake lot. a stick at. Yeah. yeah, way out to Knox and oh, back to Hartley. Right. 55 miles at Dogfish Head. I pedal a lot. Charity ride? Yeah. Charity ride. Next up was a good one. Who's going to talk dirty about who in... The Worst Ride. <laughs> worst Ride. P-Town Roubaix. <laughs> <laughs> 70 miles and it never got above 26 miles. It was cold. And snowing. Yet the next weekend it was, was 80 something. Uh, rain and freezing my ass off in there. Those rides. <laughs> those were all the rides I went to. I'm sorry. And rain and froze. And we worked for snow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Actually, that was one of the best rides. I mean, it was a bad ride, but it was adventure, some, which isn't a word. Um, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> Leah and I decided we'll go out for a shorter gravel ride, and well, I got a flat tire on a, one of the gravel roads by the creepy shed with a door that's shut with a 2 by 4 from the outside, <laughs> um, which makes you wonder what you're trying to keep in there. And uh, it was getting dark, and neither of us had a pump or a camel bag or anything. Probably lights. To nothing. We did have lights. We were just very, very unprepared. And everybody that we tried to call was not available, especially Joseph. Joseph was in the Poconos, and Leah had just had to rescue him like the previous day. So, so he owed you. He owed us, but he was like, now I'm having dinner in the Poconos. And um, we called Larry, and Larry saved the day after he finally called back because he was in the middle of breath in a game. <laughs> Leah did think about leaving me and going to save us herself, but she knew I wouldn't be able to survive she alone. <laughs> Any ride I hosted, they all were full of rain. Um, worst rides, I would say the, the Georgetown to Mountaintop, you know, to do the snappers, really ambitious ride, but man, the weather prognosticators had the forecast botched, like we were not expected to get that cold and be that rainy. You know, we thought we were going to make it through, you know, pretty much dry. But, you know, by the time we started climbing up over the Giants Despair area, it was raining already. And we were sort of committed to that ride. And that, you know, and we ran into other riders and there were mechanicals and then there was other mechanicals and there was flats. And I, I swear we were out in that Snapper 2, Snapper 3 area. It felt like a day as it was just raining harder and harder. No cover, no shelter. 
just you know snickering each other how uncomfortable we all were morale is low oh morale was super low it was like are we ever going to get out of here you know yeah i had i had, nobody had the right gear for that ride i was by the time we got back to lisa and murphs i was shivering they offered me a shower i took it just to warm my body up but uh you know that that was really nice of them my worst ride was going out. Mm -hmm. the, what's that place called? Thank you. Oh, Goodly Banner. Yeah, uh, Goodly Banner. Yeah. We're going to hill repeats. Hill repeats. Yes. Yes, that was a killer. But I did it. There are no bad rides, I guess. <laughs> There's a perfect answer. Is that an answer? Yeah. Sorry, Murphy. The G Town to Mountaintop, back to G Town, was the worst ride. Not because of the ride but because of the conditions. I was unaware I needed a space heater. It was cold and wet. Worst ride was definitely the ride after the big mountaintop ride where we were gonna do a secondary mountaintop ride and do roller coaster, but I had a new pair of shoes and they hurt my feet on the ride, so I just completely crapped out and didn't wanna finish the ride, so I think I ended up meeting Mike Crasn Hill at the roller coaster meetup spot and just completely crapped out. Handed Chris off he handed me. me the car keys and I just picked them up later at the end of the ride. Anytime when there was snow and rain, which was like fifty percent of the time. No, well, probably about seventy percent of the time. Worst ride. I didn't really have any until this last Dan Doan march that we just had uh, the end of December here. Um, that was one of the first rides this year where I was definitely a little broken at one moment and uh, Ken could definitely vouch for that <laughs> as there was a part where once Dan uh, left to go back because he was cramping up and whatnot it was just myself and Ken and we were trying to follow Dan's GPS which there was no roads or anything on his GPS it was just purely just a squiggle line with your triangle that you had to follow the line which sounds easy, but I tell you this, it was not. And when he got to an intersection and, and some of the gravel roads, there'd be you know, four roads going each way, he had to you know, ride up one a little bit, see which way your arrow was going, then ride back. And it was just a real pain, especially considering it was you know, just hovering in the 20 degree area. It was a pain in the butt. Um, so I definitely got a little dark there uh, <laughs> and uh, was getting cold, so I just wanted to bail at one point, but uh, Ken kind of talked me out of it, and we, we ended up going and finishing the route to the brewery anyway, as proposed. Next up we had... What was your best trip? I went to Dallas, Texas for my friend's wedding. Another Texas trip. Yeah. It doesn't have to be cycling. Um, Raystown. Raystown. Cycling trip. And ride to Dallas, yeah, Texas. Yeah, I went to Texas. <laughs> my first airplane ride. Oh, that's fun. He yeah. was... Not impressed. Did she give you the window seat? On the way back, I got the window seat. <laughs> 2018 road trip, Dallas, Texas. Just Penville, Arkansas. Out. Some other stuff. Footage to be inserted later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best ride of this year, honestly, has been uh, any ride that didn't have rocks in it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody here is, uh, will, will tell you I don't like rocks at all. <laughs> so I, I even go to another state so that I can ride in the, in the dirt and in the woods. White Clay. White Clay Creek, uh, Delaware. Um, hmm. Gonna have to give a shout out here. So, um, But no, I've, I've enjoyed riding here, especially at Moon Lake. And uh, Trexler Preserve is pretty good too. So We did go up there to Nimble Hill. What's that up there? Howland. Howland. Right? Preserve, Howland. Yeah. And that was the start of the season with all the rain. I loved our trip to Dogfish Head. The whole weekend was just awesome. Friends, cycling, drinking, Ubers, Uber dogs, pelting sand, just everything. Uh, best trip this year? It's easy to forget about because it was at the start of the season, but Monster Cross is always a good one every year. Uh, so this year we had myself, Leah, and Stein go down to it. Um, we stay overnight after the race and usually hit up a couple breweries down there in Virginia. It's just an overall good trip because usually seasonably it's warmer down there than here. And uh, that was the same this year as well. So you get to ride in shorts and a little lighter clothing down there. Uh, also this year, as far as trips, I was introduced to Bald Eagle State Park 
which is uh, like my love of the summer. Uh, I enjoyed going down there. Just the gravel was awesome. Um, and then mountain biking seems like it'll be really good down there as well. Unfortunately, didn't get to do that yet. So that's on the agenda for 2019. Mm -hmm. Our little quick trick to Rich's house, that right? one day or right? No, oh, yeah. That was fun. I rode the mountain bikes up there with them. Oh, actually, another one, and Lisa being Lisa, Lisa be the, 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 uh, Death the, uh, oh, driving the death vehicle. car? Support vehicle. Lisa and I being right. support, support the vehicle the next day after my failure to make the sign up for it. She was the angel of cycling death that day. <laughs> Best trip was definitely the Dallas road trip that we just did, where we did, I don't know how many miles. Some. 20, 40. Probably like 70 miles. Oh, we went to uh, uh, Monster Cross. That was fun. Monster Cross. Monster Back in February. Back in February. That was fun. The Dogfish Weekend was a two-night good food and friends and hijinks and, like, you know, fun times in the car, missing exits, raw <laughs> Ed Feist, rocking music, playing DJ. You know, it was gr it was all his songs were right in my wheelhouse and, like, you know... For me, missing exits, it might have been a headache for the people, for, for Gary, the driver, <laughs> but like it would just meant extra tunes for me in the back seat. Um, but one thing, we, we took a day trip, a very ambitious day trip, leave for Racetown early in the morning, ride all day. Gary had anticipated, you know, going for 30 miles, you know, pretty much doing every part of the trail system over there, and then returning, returning that evening, and. Uh, and it sort of worked out. The trail conditions were pretty good. The leaves had already fallen, but they were manageable. It, it was actually a period of time where maybe there wasn't rain, like for the day before or two days before. It was somewhat dry, and uh, we rode it real hard. We rode it real fast, and for me, it gave me a little shot in the arm and gave me excited about mountain biking again because, like I said, I'd been hurt, and I, I, I didn't really do all that much of it because I was sort of fearful. I didn't want to get launched off my bike, and... Uh, so I did a lot of road and gravel up to that point, but that was fun to like really go to Racetown, a place I really like, and let it fly. It's not that rocky, but it's a great confidence builder if you want to get back to like um, you know turning and bike handling skills and different skills that aren't used in gravel and, and road. It definitely gave me some confidence to do uh, some some good stuff later on, like uh, you know some mountaintop stuff and Port Jervis. I did after that. It was a lot of fun. So definitely Racetown was a good confidence builder, a good trip. We went to Penn State to eat after there and, and drink. I went out. I had dirt all over my face. Everyone else is laughing at me. But I, I was so hungry and I had so much fun. I just wanted to eat and drink and, you know, yeah, and, and get, in the, get in the car and, and get home. But that was a great day trip. And when you show up to Gary's house and Leah's house and... Uh, you know, you're getting a nice social group together to go out to Racetown and get Gra Gary's passing out itinerary of everything <laughs> that he wants to do on Honey Stinger, Letterstock, no <laughs> doubt. Um, and pretty much to a T it worked out. I think there was a little bit on the other side that we ended up not doing yeah. because we were running in the darkness. Not everyone had lights. But, uh, but I mean, we did the whole one side, had the intermission. Some people stopped riding because we had 25 miles by the intermission, I think, or it was definitely over 23, and uh, and didn't quite get everything on the other side, but we got we got a lot of it. So I, I think I ended up near 30, and uh, and that was a that was a real fun ride, real fun day. And I did go to Ray's Indoor Mountain Bike Park. That was I think this year technically. It's February. A positive one. Ask the reviewers what their biggest accomplishment was. What'd you do? Oh, uh, my winning at Wellsboro. Yeah, you got first place. Yeah, there. I won at Wellsboro this year. That was great. Uh, what was that it's called? Uh, the the Ask Staff Classic. The Laurel, Laurel, Laurel Run, Classic. Laurel Classic, yeah. Won that race. That was cool. It was the first one of the time. First place. Not getting rained on. <laughs> cool, those pedals. Was getting on the Lou Laco Waco Hondo Facebook page in costume was a 50 mile gravel ride with Gary. We went up Sorber Mountain and through Knoxon. At the Monster Cross race that I mentioned before, uh, I did get sixth place in the overall open class, so that was pretty cool to start off this season with that. Um, and also, just making it the 300 mile venture up to Massachusetts was also pretty cool as well.
for I got to be a camp counselor for the Teen Trail Corps camp for the uh, interscholastic mountain biking kids and uh, the grit camp so that's girls riding trails so that was an all girls mountain biking camp and that was awesome over the summer Thank so you. big thanks to Elena for including me on that because that was some really cool stuff. Totally and going up in front of your clubs. No. Clipless pedals. Yeah, why are they cool? Yeah, no. for yeah, 20. Leaf, leaf blow and stairway to heaven, that's an accomplishment. Bagging that buck. Well, that's your accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, best accomplishments, even with the injury, I still got 4,000 miles um, of riding and of riding, you know, three applications primarily the uh, mountain bike, which was less this year because I was a little fearful about landing on an outstretched hand and re hurting myself. Um, but gravel biking and, uh, and road riding to sort of get my conditioning back in the mix. Um, 2019 was a huge year because we bought a house. Whee! Yeah. Woo! And I Good dug a hole. This is the biggest hole I ever dug in my life. Was 17 feet by 13 feet by 4 feet deep by hand with a shovel so we could build a freaking patio in the backyard. And we did it. It's a nice patio. We have a great patio in the backyard, but the best part was before we had a patio, we had a party without the patio, and all of my friends who really love me, we just sat at where the patio was supposed to be, and they dangled their little feet into the hole and, and just weeded. talked about how good the patio was going to be. <laughs> it was great. And we pulled out weeds. Fail alert. Fail alert. What were your biggest fails of 2019? <laughs> Getting poured on right after Joseph said, if we leave the checkerboard now, we should be okay. <laughs> oh, didn't reach 4,000 miles this year. Got close. What? Losing weight. <laughs> Eating less. And getting back to a race town didn't happen, and I didn't ride Knox this year. Yeah. Always feel like we could go to different, more places to ride than we do, even though we did a pretty good job this year. Uh, and then also just more trail work and getting some more things built around here on Peak Town. Well, I had a major injury last year where I missed like two months of riding, had a torn biceps tendon, and uh, it was six weeks of nothing. It was very little bit before that too, because I was jammed up with baseball. So my one of my goals, like what am I striving for in 2019 is to stay healthier and uh, to ride more and try to find a way to get on the bike two two times a week I think is a serviceable goal like during baseball like not going out there doing you know major league things maybe during the week like I'm doing now but just to tread water and go out and do a prisoner like on a weekday um, you know at night by myself that's what it might take um, I did not KO at Moon Lake the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> watch out Jim Janik <laughs> The gauntlet's been thrown. Uh, Beat Tim Janik. <laughs> Trail, the whole thing. Firebacher. 165 miles in two days. Be there or don't. It's your choice. I wish that I learned how to do more maintenance on my own bike. Because Gary is kind of my wrench. So I just let him do everything. So... Jess and I had a really big fail on a ride because she flatted. And then we realized neither one of us had anything to repair the flat because we both left our bags at the house. Super big fail. Super big fail. Big fail. <laughs> it was a big fail. And then there was nobody to rescue us, but eventually Larry did save us. So thank you, Larry. And the biggest question always comes around the new year. What are you striving for in 2019? What will you do this year? Good stuff, I hope. <laughs> Over 4,000 miles. 4,000 plus miles. So why don't they just let us see? Race mode. I think your passes are really dumb because that's so much Got it on camera. 4,000 plus miles for Papa Slime. I'd like to do a bigger ride. Do I think we'd probably don't well, we want to do the ride to Chris's dad's house this upcoming year. Let's do it. Yeah. Who's with us? We're doing the DNL. Trail. Beat Jim Janik. <laughs> <laughs> to get a full time job. Full time jobs all around. <laughs> to lose weight and ride more bikes and try and get half as many miles 
in and lose it this year. You could to lose weight, to be genetic. Not fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> At every party, every party I go to, that's it. <laughs> Good goals. Be Jim Janet. <laughs> Probably get a new bike, uh, full suspension, oh, twenty-seven five. There you go. And uh, really, the main goal for being a for my life in general would be to go to Italy and reconnect with some family that I've just discovered that I have over uh, on the continent. Uh, also, I'd like to do more mountain biking, because that's sort of how I got into cycling in the first place a couple years ago. Um, and first of all, I didn't ride because I was injured and coming off injury and everything else. But second of all, it was a pretty terrible year to be a mountain bike. If you only rode exclusively mountain bike, you probably had your, one of your worst turnout numbers of mileage you know, ever since you've been doing it, because it was just, you know, most days it was unsuitable to ride. It seemed like it from July through like now, we got so much rain. And if it wasn't raining that day, we got too much rain from the day before and the trails, you, you know, weren't really that good. And the rocks were slippery and the roots were slippery and everything else. Let's see. Hopefully less rain and more riding in the woods, not on the road, in the woods. <laughs> That's ideal. Cheers. Ride more. I'm going to travel more. <laughs> travel more. That's why it's a good one. I She's like gonna that. It's going to be Jim Janet. I would like to do more miles as a total by the end of the year. I'd like to keep up my elevation game. I thought that was pretty impressive for 2018, but it needs to get better. Um, I would like to ride in more locations. I've already started a list of goal of where I'd like to ride, both gravel and mountain. Next up, focused on the review. The question asked was, what was your favorite P-Town review episode? Let's see. I liked when uh, Gary reviewed his winter gear. Yeah, that winter was gear. Oh yeah, the winter yeah. gear that I watched and I didn't really skip through. Looked like I was. <laughs> I loved, loved the Halloween review. I love Halloween. I have made Gary love Halloween. And now we have a Halloween ride. And a Halloween song. It doesn't get any better than that. Mine as well had to be Halloween, I think. Just because that was the first episode where every everything came together with the same theme from music uh, to the backgrounds and the rides and everything. The, the whole Halloween theme was right through the entire episode. I like the music <laughs> with the hot tub. That was, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and your little robes walking out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a church service. Yes, yes. <laughs> Definitely where you guys went to see the Halloween lights up a mountaintop because that was cool. <laughs> Definitely Halloween, you know, no doubt. The first thing that was shocking was late August around the time of the Redneck Roubaix is uh, when there was a P-Town jangle, like a rock-oriented <laughs> P-Town jangle. But the, the Halloween episode, that sets the new bar. The holiday episode, I'm sure, is going to be big, a half hour long, I'm hearing. And there's music and, you know, but like now it's like special categories, there's intros, outros, music specifically for episodes, you know. I thought that was, you know, really, you know, a good episode. And plus I was on a bunch of the rides. Was, we did the Racetown ride in that episode, I think, and we did a Halloween lights ride up in the New Goal area. Uh, uh, favorite P-Town review moments? I didn't fill it out on there, but I was blown away when Gary made the jingle like <laughs> late August and like that was definitely showing that that this thing was gonna get big because it was like right in my wheelhouse it was like rock music cycling being a goof having fun um, you know involving a lot of different people I know on camera like every week so that was really fun so reminiscing from out of town next up we had a couple videos sent in by absentee ballots so we have a video of Richard's review for his year and Joseph as well. So here's those two clips. All right, P-Town Weekend Reviewers, happy 2019. Let me start off by saying that 2018 was a great year for me in cycling and it looked like uh, by, from what I could tell from Strava and stories people have told me, it looks like all of you guys had had a great 2018 cycling year too. So 
Kudos for that and uh, looking forward to even more adventures in 2019. Now to recap uh, 2018, I'd have to say one of my biggest adventures that we had um, cycling in 2018 was our 300 mile road ride we did from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania to Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, we broke the ride up into two days and it took us almost 12 hours a day times two days of riding to get there and uh, it did not stop raining the whole time. It was, uh, I, I don't want to say the word miserable, but it was definitely some type two fun being had. And um, it, it was uh, just one of the biggest rides I think I've ever done. I've never ridden more than 120 miles at a time and certainly didn't get off the bike and say, yeah, I'm gonna do this again tomorrow. Epic ride, um, and that was definitely the highlight there in 2018. So, Joseph couldn't be here in person. He's um, right there. But he did send over his stunt double. So, Joseph, we have a couple questions for you. Um, we would just like you to answer as honestly as you can or, you know, speak from the heart. So, for 2018, what was your best ride? Baldy. Ooh, what was your longest ride? Baldy. Um, okay. What would you consider your worst ride? Baldy. Uh, okay. Um, what do you think was your best accomplishment? Completing Baldy. Okay, we seem to have a theme here. Uh, failed goals of 2018. Enjoying Baldy. Oh, uh, you love that Baldy. What do you think the best P-Town review episode was? Puking on Baldy episode. And what do you think was the best trip you had this year? Returning home from Baldy. What do you strive for in 2019? Enjoying a Baldy ride. And then lastly, there's just a couple more potpourri clips that really didn't fit into any of the other categories. Uh, so here's a few other memories. Best anything. I said CWPs. <laughs> CWP. Uh, we, we did that. Um, a memorable one was when we jumped in the pool here was really cold. Um, well into the fall. And the, the Montour Preserve ride was the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And there was ice out on that lake and like three of us jumped in. It was undocumented, but like Aaron Dandone and myself actually jumped in. It was just a sloppy, real hard, sweaty, sweltering ground, oozing mud, you know, just a real dirty ride. And, you know, I felt somewhat more refreshed and clean after we did that, so it was worth it. Um, we got to meet Strava friends. Like, they weren't just a little picture on a social media anymore like they're real people and I got to meet them in person got to ride with them in person and now there's a better connection and it's just amazing to have these people in my life now and be able to call them my friends instead of just Strava people. Um, as far as fondest memories I, I really enjoy every ride I'm on, from the biggest, you know, Dan Doan 87 milers and dogfish, you know, you know, rides where we're really going at, at it for four hours. And I just like riding my bike with my kids and like having them look at Strava and seeing their pictures and we'll go down to Rominsky's Market and get an ice cream or get some candy, make it a destination and do a little loop back and, uh, you know, those are just as fun. I break out my old... Uh, Mongoose California and BMX yeah. bike. Sometimes I'll commute over to the gym just to go out and ride that because I really enjoy cycling and you know riding bikes. But it's really nice to to get them excited about riding as well. Um, and also to remake the Prison Loop video. Uh, started out to make that as a promotional video to show kind of what it was all about because people usually asked. And then uh, rewatching that, I I I don't know where we want to ride with that one, but it was a horrible video and would probably make no one want to ride the British Loop ever. So i uh, going to look, forward, uh, look at doing that for 2019 as well, redoing that guy. Oh, and the ride of the day. Like, you know, and ride of the day, you know, is something that people, like, bust my chops around about. But I think it's becoming sort of a thing because I've always thought about it. And people are expecting and, it now. And you're right. It's Now it's become a thing where, like, you know, people are putting in their Strava posts. I, I was really striving. I went out striving for ride of the day, but things didn't work go my way. But uh, 
I always did it in my head, but now I'm just doing it on Strava. And what I do is I try to get the best effort in any application, as you know, as far as you know, road, gravel, mountain, weather conditions, how many hours they were out there, and just try to pick the, what I think was the the best effort of the day or the biggest ride or you know, you know, parts of both. Um, and I, I sort of, like I said, I've always done it, and now recently I'm just sort of awarding it at the end of the day. If, if, and uh, and like I said, hopefully it's people, it's not too annoying, and people think it's out of control. I just, it, I think it's a fun way to like make Strava even more fun, and Strava's awesome anyway, I think, anyway. It's fun to like look at people's comments and I laugh out loud often and uh, cycling such a big part of everyone's life who, who follows it and uh, it's just you know something among my circle of friends or people that I've come across during in cycling that uh, you know hopefully it, it makes you want to go out and ride more not you know that I'm being a real pain in the arse like coming up with this you know uh, silly little thing but like I said I always did it in my head and uh, I just started putting it down there and uh, Eric Heiduck was an early adapter, uh, an early adopter of it. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about what do you think the ride of the day was. And, uh, and then I sort of just threw it out there with people I, I didn't really know that well. Like, you know, I, I never met Drew Jubas yet. And I started following him when you guys rode with him. And uh, we correspond on Strava a little bit. But, like, he's sort of like, he's looking for the cash prize, you know, and he's been riding forever. So, but uh, but it's pretty cool when people I don't know that well sort of roll along with it. So, and hopefully, you know, Gary and I did some talking about if Gary's going to move on with this for the next year, that you know we'll look at the ride of the days maybe over the course of a week, and we'll throw him one, and maybe we'll get a ride of the week, and uh, it'd be really cool if somebody would give me their relive or something, and we could throw it on there and talk about that ride and like what that person did that day or why it got ride of the week or whatever. So. Um, just Strava fun. It's very enjoyable to me. <laughs> so that's going to be it for the interview portion of the New Year's Year in Review. I uh, hope you enjoyed looking at back that. I know everybody did kind of going back through the year and uh, it was hard to chop the interviews down. There's a lot of funny stuff, a lot of laughs that night uh, as everybody took their turn in the chair as well. Um, but Try to trim it down as best as I can while keeping all the good stuff in there. Uh, there's going to end up being a second part to the year in review. There'll be another one coming out, another episode that focuses on just the review itself. And I'm going to go back through and handpick some of my favorite parts and pieces of the episodes all the way back uh, from episode one on through and put together a little scramble montage of that. So we'll have that guy coming out as well to remember 2018. But not going to dwell on the past too much. Looking forward to the future. Hope you're already out riding a lot and working on those goals uh, that we all uh, laid out for us. But we'll see you on the trails. Finally frozen again before we get the patch of snow. Have a good week. the episode. Thanks for joining us. Peace out. Have a good year.